All right, folks, we're going to get going on our next panel. I know you can, you're eager to hear from our distinguished alums. So if everyone could take their seats, including our panel. All right, I know socializing and meeting up with old friends is the best part of, of today, but uh, we have one panel between us and lunch, and at lunch there's lots of socializing <laughs> time. Um, I'd now like to introduce the moderator for our third panel, Ben Schneider, who is Ford International Professor of Political Science and Director of the MIT Brazil Program. Ben studies comparative politics, political economy, and Latin American politics, and writes on economic reform, democratization, business groups, industrial policy, policy and other topics. So welcome, Ben. Thank you, Andrea. Um, our final panel of the morning um, features some of our distinguished alumni. Um, and the panelists were asked to reflect on MIT's distinctive approaches to political science. Um, I'll give some brief introductions, and I want to keep it brief. Um, I could go on with the many and major accomplishments of this, of our panelists, but I want to leave them as much time as possible. So our speakers are Richard Locke at MIT. He um, studied and concentrated in the area of political economy. He's an expert on uh, international labor markets, on labor rights, on labor unions, and on corporate responsibility. He's a former head of our department and now provost at Brown University. Stephen Wilkinson uh, focused his doctoral work on comparative politics. Um, his research since then has focused on ethnic conflict, on corruption, um, on civil military relations and currently on war and political change. He is currently the Nilekani Professor of uh, India and South Asian Studies, as well as currently Chair of the Department of Political Science at Yale University. Samuel Popkin um, earned a PhD here emphasizing uh, American politics. His research focuses on the presidency and on presidential elections and campaigns and also has made some significant contributions to the study of peasant politics in Southeast, Southeast Asia. Samuel is currently a uh, professor of political science at the University of California, San Diego. Benjamin Valentino, uh, concentrated in security studies here at MIT. Um, his research analyzes the causes and consequences of violent conflict, as well as security and uh, foreign policy of the United States. He is associate professor uh, in, of government at Dartmouth College. <laughs> Lastly, Arkan Fung um, studied, uh, concentrated here at MIT in political theory. Uh, his research focuses on the policies, practices, and institutional de designs that deepen uh, the quality of democratic governance. Uh, he is currently Ford International Professor of Democracy and Citizenship um, and Acting Dean of the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. So thank you all very much for joining this panel. Um, look forward to the discussion. So good morning. Uh, nice to see you all, and uh, thank you all for uh, inviting me to participate in this uh, really terrific uh, symposium. It's uh, wonderful uh, to see uh, so many uh, friends and colleagues and, uh, and former students. Uh, so I've been asked to uh, speak about MIT's distinctive approach to political economy uh, in eight minutes. Uh, and so uh, I, will try, I will try my best. And I kept on getting these emails. Remember, it's eight minutes, eight minutes, OK, eight minutes. Um, so uh, when describing the field of political economy, I think people normally divide it by sort of methodological approach or sort of distinctive way of studying. They think about it either quantitative or qualitative, positive as opposed to historical, uh, institutional. And what I think is so uh, distinctive about what goes on here at MIT is that none of those traditional distinctions uh, work 
for the, uh, for the kind of research uh, and teaching that happens uh, in this department, because people, in fact, are working across various methods, across different approaches, often blending them together. So for me, when I think about what's truly distinctive about political, political economy in this department, I would say uh, that it's uh, characterized by six uh, features. I know you're supposed to always have three, but you know it's, it's the age of inflation again, so it's going to be six. So um, I think that the first distinguishing feature uh, of political economy at MIT is that it is genuinely political, that it's focused on the political determinants and or consequences of various economic phenomena, whether it's issues of globalization or labor market outcomes or even distributional uh, uh, policies uh, and outcomes. And this is key because rather than employing what often happens is various economic methods and theories to explain political phenomena, this is something that I think many other departments uh, do, what happens at, M at MIT is that we look at politics, both sort of big P politics, sort of macro institutions, regulations, et cetera, and little p politics, political interests, uh, identities, struggles, coalitions, at the micro level to try to understand how these things, how political factors, big P and little p factors, actually shape economic outcomes and phenomena. And much of the work that goes on at MIT focuses on actually both the micro foundations as well as the macro structural determinants that shape economic phenomena. I think of the work that Suzanne Berger has done for years, whether it's about uh, French peasants or globalization, uh, Kathy Thielen's work on labor market policies or welfare state policies, Gary Harrigal's work on industrialization patterns and their consequences in Germany, or even Dick Samuel's work on energy policy uh, in Japan. It all was basically focusing on the political determinants of a phenomena that you might otherwise think is simply economic. So that's the first, I think, key determinant. The second feature that I think is quite distinctive about what goes on in this department uh, is that uh, it's fundamentally, political economy in this department is fundamentally comparative. Regardless of whether the study is explicitly comparative, sort of comparing across different nation states, or focused seemingly on only one country, all of the work is structured to compare how the same focus of study, whether it be a policy, or an outcome like employment or exports, or a movement, a political or social movement, plays out across different regions within a country or across countries. But it is always deeply comparative. And what's interesting is implicitly in this work, there's always this kind of shadow case of what's going on, on the, out there and how does it compare to what's happening here uh, in the United States. Uh, so I think that that's a really distinctive uh, feature. A third feature of political economy uh, at MIT is that it blends the quote unquote science of political science with policy. And you heard this a little bit in the last panel. Uh, it's not just true for political economy, it's true for security studies and other areas as well. So MIT, as you all know, does not have a policy school. And as such, I think it's lucky not to have institu an institutionalized division between those scholars who care about theory and methods and the science of political science and those who care about policy uh, implications. And as a result, much of the political economy work done in this department at MIT blends both. It examines in a very rigorous way the determinants or consequences and or consequences of different economic phenomena and their policy implications. And this is as true for the work that's being done on innovation and production economy, on globalization, or even the provision of public goods across various uh, developing uh, countries. And I think this is really a distinctive and very important feature of this department. I think a fourth feature that so nicely characterizes the MIT pro approach to political economy is that the vast amount of the work is based on field research, 
on going out into the world and studying economic phenomena policies uh, in question. Again, this cuts across methodological approaches. Whether one is doing case studies or ethnographies or surveys or even experiments, experiments of a variety of different types, everyone at MIT is out there. They're learning from, they're learning in, they're learning about the world. This blending theory that you take, uh, take uh, from your classroom with empirical field findings in the field is truly one of the great strengths of this uh, department. And it also characterizes the nature of the work because it's deeply empirical work. There are very strong ties between theory and empirical research in the political economy work that's done in this department. It's very theoretically grounded, but also very empirically rich. And I think part of that is not just sort of the kind of work that gets done by sort of the senior scholars, but I think that there's something very interesting about this department about how political theorists have always been very integrated into the work of political economy. Whether we're talking about Josh Cohen or Stuart White or Lucas Stancic, What's interesting is the kind of problems that they work on and the kinds of problems that they help other people work on always blended nicely theory and empirics. I think a fifth uh, key feature of the MIT style of political economy is that it's collaborative, that so much of the work is built around and supported by collaborative projects, whether, again, it's the Made in America um, uh, project that I worked on when I was a graduate student, uh, or the Globalization Project, or the Innovation Project, or GovLab, uh, or labor standards work that I was doing when I was uh, here. What goes on in this department is that it brings together groups of students and faculty uh, together to work on these big problems. And each one may be carving out a small piece for themselves so they can write a dissertation or an article, uh, et cetera. But they come together to be able to explore and study and analyze problems that no single individual scholar or student would be able to do uh, alone. And that build, and that sort of collaborative effort is important, not just in terms of the quality of the work we do and the nature of the work uh, that we do, but it also builds community. It builds community within the department, and it builds community also across the department and with the rest of the institute. And the last feature that I think is quite distinctive about political economy at MIT is that it is optimistic. That, and this is really important, I think, in today's current era, there are so many pressing challenges, you know, persistent poverty and growing inequality and long-term unemployment and declining social benefits and outcomes, et cetera, let alone what we heard in the last panel about war and all, all these other things. Uh, and what's so interesting about the work that gets done here at MIT in political economy is that the work analyzes and identifies what are the key factors or constraints that shape these persistent economic challenges, whether it's unemployment or, or poverty, et, et cetera. And, and it's, it tries to identify what are those structural constraints, whether they're technological or sociological, demographic, whatever they are, these are the constraints. But what it tries to show is that within those very real constraints, so this isn't like sort of rosy tinted glasses. We understand that there are real problems with real constraints, but within those constraints, there still is room for choice. There still is freedom for political will and for political strategy and for, uh, and for uh, coalitions to try to do something about these problems. So identifying the constraints, showing that there is still some sort of freedom of choice, trying to understand why different actors in different countries make those choices, that is imp that's central to the work we do. And I think it's central to the work that we need to do in an era of very polarized politics. Let me conclude by saying that I think that um, the political economy work that gets done in, uh, in this department has been so important, not only for building a distinctive brand for MIT, of you know, what does it mean to do political economy at MIT? It's been, it's been central to the kind of institute-wide projects that go on, whether about innovation or, or globalization. Uh, but it's also, and I think this is most important, it's been central to building an intellectual community that cuts across fields and cuts, cuts across uh, generations. And I think that's the lasting legacy of this department. Thank you very much.